Well, Stats Canada says the unemployment rate edged down in January. Unemployment hit 5.7 percent last month as the economy added 37,000 jobs. This marks the first decline in unemployment since December of 2022. January's job gains were led by part-time work and entirely in the services sector. Meanwhile, wages rose 5.3 percent from a year ago. For more on what all of this means, we're joined live by David McDonald, a senior economist at the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon, David. Uh, let's start with focusing on the positives. I'm sure some people would like that. 37,000 new jobs last month, unemployment dropping, hourly wages rising. Walk us through some of these positives. Yeah, that's right. So over the course of 2023, we actually saw the unemployment rate creeping up over the course of the year. We ended the year almost uh, almost a full point higher than we started 2023. This is the first data point now in 2024. Uh, and the unemployment rate has come down a small amount. Uh, wage gains have continued to be relatively high year over year, uh, just over 5% uh, in the January data. Now, if we look back at the inflation data, that was just over 3%. And so workers are clawing their way back from the wage losses that they took over the course of the inflationary period in 2021-2022. Um, when we look at those wage gains, they are different depending on where you are in the income spectrum. If you're at the high end of the income spectrum, you're seeing wage gains closer to 6%. If you're at the low end of the wage spectrum, well, you're seeing wage gains closer to 4%. But in any event, uh, those are both going to be higher than inflation as workers claw their way back from the inflationary period. It seems difficult to focus on the positives because even within them, there are certain things that make it harder to see as a win. One of them being the quality of these new jobs. It was mentioned that the spike was mostly driven by part-time work. Meantime, 12,000 full-time jobs were lost. So in your opinion, is this still a net positive situation? Well, certainly uh, the unemployment rate masks uh, the what's called the participation rate. And so the unemployment rate can go down if people stop looking for work. That's not because they got a job. It's just because they stopped looking. That means the unemployment rate goes down. And that's, in fact, exactly what happened in January. Uh, the employment rate went down, particularly for youth, as well as for prime working aged adults, although it didn't go down for seniors. Uh, and one of the big reasons why it went down was uh, youth in particular stopped looking for work and went back to school. And so we see this switch of people out of the labor market into uh, seeking out school, which isn't necessarily a bad thing over the long term. But it is one of the reasons why we saw the unemployment rate go down. Uh, you know, we saw more jobs, but we actually saw more people entering uh, the, uh, the, the labor market. And so as a result, you know, you do get slightly lower unemployment rate. Um, but it's largely because people were, were looking for work. Mm, so the story is hidden within the numbers. I'm curious about the future of everyday Canadians when it comes to these numbers. It seems like BMO, CIBC economists have come out warning they're not rushing to cut interest rates anytime soon based off this data. So my question for you is, are they right to make that call? Well, so we've got two da new data points now. Uh, we got the GDP numbers out last week. Uh, we now have these unemployment rate numbers that came out uh, this uh, just just yesterday. Uh, the GDP numbers were were actually quite positive for the fourth quarter of 2023. That was not what was expected. We were expecting zero growth, like we saw for most of the year uh, of 2023. It looks like, you know, these are the preliminary numbers anyway, it looks like the growth was pretty decent in the fourth quarter uh, of 2023. Then we see the unemployment rate statistics, which are slightly improved. Um, but the other thing the bank does not want to see, this is the Bank of Canada, they don't want to see wage gains. You know, they do want to see the uh, real pay cuts that workers took in uh, the inflationary period. They want to see those stick around. They don't want to see workers claw their way back uh, because they think that's going to drive inflation. I'm not sure that that's true, but that's certainly the bank's position. Now, uh, Tiff Macklem, the governor of the Bank of Canada, put out a speech earlier this week where he said, in essence, I'm paraphrasing here, but he said, uh, the period of rate increases is over. What we are looking at now is when do we decrease rates? And so I think uh, in, in that setup, uh, I think we're going to wait a little bit longer to see decreases in rates, given the strength in the economy, given the strength in the uh, labor market generally. But but critically, given the strength in wage gains uh, as workers try to claw their way back, this is something we may wait longer for. We may sit at this 5% overnight rate 
uh, for longer, which is going to be increasingly difficult for people with mortgages or people renting. Uh, those folks have seen huge increases in their costs uh, and doesn't look like there's going to be any imminent decline in those interest rates and in those costs. It's interesting to note there are the drops currently set for June. Interesting to see if they decide to push stuff back, depending on that information. Uh, David McDonald, senior economist at the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Thanks for having me.